Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Christopher and the organization of the event for the opportunity. Uh, oh, just complimenting uh, my introduction, uh, I'm an aeronautical engineer. I graduated in 2008 uh, from University of Sao Paulo. And I went to, to work at Embraer uh, as a product development engineer and in the areas of applied aerodynamics and flight mechanics of defense uh, products. And I'm also sailplane and airplane, uh, private pilot. Uh, for those who are not familiar, uh, Embraer is a global company headquartered in Brazil. And we develop our business in the areas of commercial aviation, uh, executive aviation, and defense and security. Uh, about Embraer Defense Security, uh, I will briefly uh, show our main products. Uh, the A29 Super Tucano is a light attack and trainer. It's one of our successful uh, products. We deliver more than 160 airplanes. Uh, it's operational in nine nations, and we have more than uh, 23,000 hours of real combat with this aircraft. We also develop uh, ISR systems. Uh, the Embraer 145 AWNC and Moulton Cell, uh, which, are, uh, which were based on our proven reliable and cost-effective ERJ-145 platform. This one is employed by uh, Brazilian Air Force on the Amazon Patrol, also uh, uh, with Mexico and Greece uh, Air Force. Uh, our new product uh, under development is the KC-390. Uh, is a state-of-art. It, it, it employs a state-of-art avionics, uh, full fly-by-wire, and uh, computer air release point for cargo deployment. Uh, it's also suitable for special missions. Uh, we are expecting the first flight for mid-2015. Uh, we also do aircraft modernization. Uh, we did for the Brazilian Air Force uh, F-5s and AMX, and the Brazilian Navy A-4s. We also develop uh, VIP transport. This one is uh, used by the Brazilian government. It's, it's based on the E-190 uh, VIP, uh, regional jet. And recently, Embraer has, has done many partnerships uh, with uh, foreign uh, uh, companies in the areas of MRO, C4I, radars, and UAVs uh, for solutions in defense and security. Uh, about the, the 145 AWNC India program, uh, that's the, the main subject, uh, I'll, I'll talk about the challenge of converting an original platform into an NWC uh, aircraft. I'll talk ab about uh, the program background. Uh, there, I'll briefly explain so, uh, some things about uh, aircraft uh, AWC uh, conceptual design, uh, aerodynamic design, wind tunnel testing, configuration freezing, design optimization, and production and delivery. So about the program. Uh, this program is a joint program between CABS and Embraer uh, to develop a multi-mission surveillance aircraft. And the final customer is the Indian Air Force, and it's based on the ERJ-145 uh, regional jet. Uh, CABS is responsible for the mission systems, include ISR, self-protection, and tactical communication systems. And Embraer is, is responsible for the platform modifications, uh, air, uh, airframe manufacture, and airworthiness qualification. About the 145 regional jet, uh, the XR model uh, it has 50 seats, uh, 2,000 nautical miles of range, and 0.8 Mach maximum cruise. We have delivered more than 1,100 air aircraft, uh, which has logged 19 million flight hours. Uh, it's used by 30 airlines from 20 countries. The program status, uh, after the go-ahead, we had many milestones completed, including the, the manufacture of three prototypes, uh, actually, uh, currently we are, we are in various flight testing the prototype number one, and CABS is, system, is performing systems tests on the prototypes number two and three. Uh, about uh, AWNC aircraft conceptual design. First, uh, what's the aircraft uh, role? It's the early detection of hostile activity. Basically, it's used uh, to allow uh, defense forces to prepare su uh, suitable countermeasures when attacked, and also to direct fighters and bombers to their tar target location. Uh, the basic profile of the mission is takeoff, climb, and patrol. It's a very simple mission. 
The key design features to perform that kind of mission are long endurance, because you, ha you must uh, have a lot of time on the area of interest to search for uh, hostile act activity. Uh, long range, because sometimes your, your area of interest is, is far from your base. Uh, high service sailing, because if you fly high, you have uh, a better, uh, a, a, more, uh, a larger area which your radar covers, and also you are less uh, uh, susceptible to, to ground attacks. Uh, high speed cruise, because you do not want to spend your time cruising, you want to perform your mission. And self protection capability. Uh, the desirable uh, design features are, of course, a low acquisition and operational costs, high dispatch reliability, and in flight refueling capability so you can increase your time on station. Uh, starting uh, an AWC aircraft design, you can choose uh, two approaches. You can start a clean sheet design uh, from scratch, or you can convert on an existing platform. Uh, about clean sheet design, if not the only one, uh, one of the few uh, clean sheet designs of this kind of aircraft is the Grumman E2C. Uh, this aircraft is, it was developed in the late, late 50s for, for the U.S. Navy. And that time uh, of history, they, they had a lot of more budget for military systems than uh, our economic realities. So this work, this, the development of a clean sheet design aircraft uh, is not common. Uh, almost all the designs are conversion of an existing platform. So uh, you can ask why. Basically, it's time and money, because uh, the development of an AEWNC aircraft is very time demanding and capital intensive. So uh, you start a clean sheet design, you're going to spend a lot of money, you're going to take a lot of time. So the conversion of an existing platform is the solution ad adopted by uh, almost all manufacturers. So uh, if you're going to convert a platform, you must select a platform. And this platform must meet your desire, design requirements. Uh, our aircraft, it meets the design requirements and has uh, as features a uh, turbofan engine that allows to fly at high altitudes and high speeds with uh, a good uh, spe specific fuel consumption. The right size, uh, it's not so small that it wouldn't even fit the systems but it's not so big that it would, it would increase the operational costs and, and other issues of bigger aircraft. It has a high dispatch reliability and maintenance availability because it's an airliner. Uh, the airliners cannot have their aircraft on the ground. They lose money. So this aircraft is always ready to, to fly. Uh, safety, you have a, a high level of safety. You never lost any ERJ-145 in accidents. And certified, it's, a, it's a civilian certified platform. So we have uh, all those systems, uh, everything is tested and assured by the authorities. Uh, about after you, you do your conceptual design, you choose your, you ch you choose your platform, you start your preliminary aerodynamic design. Uh, the preliminary, preliminary design of aircraft, it deals with the general layout, uh, basically the external shape and the internal arrangement. And this, this, this process, is, it, it takes into account all, the, all those technologies, all aeronautical technologies, uh, non-aeronautical structures, systems, uh, from aer aerodynamics to manufacturing. So it's a multidisciplinary iterative design analysis. Sorry. Um, in our case, the platform modification was based, uh, basically the integration of the mission systems, some stru structural modif modifications, and aerodynamic modifications. Uh, all those modifications were done following some constraints. Uh, basically, the, the, the most important ones are the flight envelopes, our uh, VN diagram, and the weight and balance envelope. Why is that? Because uh, those, those envelopes, they, they are uh, practically frozen by the origi original type certificate of the aircraft. So if you change drastically those envelopes, you will not take credit of a lot of validated test data from your basic platform. So it's a good practice to, to do all your modifications 
uh, trying to keep your, your fight envelope and your weight and balance envelope. About the preliminary aerodynamic modifications of our aircraft, uh, the triple AU uh, is, is one of the most important because it's one of the biggest components. And so uh, we started our preliminary des aerodynamic design with the triple AU. Uh, about the, the preliminary positioning on the aircraft of the triple AU, it's a compromise between the system's performance, I already explained on the past presentation, uh, the center of gravity, because it's a heavy component, so if you place it uh, far away from the aircraft's uh, center of gravity, you're going to have problems. Uh, lateral direction stability and control, because the antenna has a large uh, lateral area, so it affects your lateral stability. And structural attachment points. Uh, about the aerodynamic positioning of the, the antenna, we used uh, theoretical magic methods and semi-empirical methods to, to predict the best location for the, the AAAU following the other design constraints. So uh, in the case we moved uh, extremely after uh, forward the, the antenna, it would have problems of stability. We, ho we would have our C and beta, our uh, yaw, yaw moment der derivative. It would be positive, uh, which means your aircraft would be unstable on the directional axis. In the case you move backwards, you would have a turbulent wake affecting your empennage. So uh, you would have, uh, you'd lose effectiveness of your horizontal tail and vertical tail because our aircraft is detail. So uh, naturally, the best position for the antenna is, is close to the center of the aircraft. And the ideal incidence is a little inclined forward because uh, when the aircraft is on station, it, ha it has some angle of attitude and the, the antenna should lie horizontally, so it's inclined when the aircraft is leveled. Uh, about the AAAU geometry optimization, uh, as previously explained by, by Mrs. Mrs. Uh, we used CFD simulations uh, in conjunction with CABS to optimize the geometry of the AAAU. Uh, the, the original geometry, it had some problems. Uh, you, you can see on the, on the front of the antenna, you have some cross flow, which causes adverse pressure gradients, which means uh, a lot of drag. Uh, on the top of the antenna, you can see on the front, a lot of separation, which means a lot of drag too. And on the back of the antenna, uh, there is a lot of separation too. So uh, after we did the simulations uh, jointly with CABS, we had this final geometry. And you can see there's almost no uh, cross flow on the front of the antenna, uh, much lower uh, adverse pressure gradient, no separation on the, on the top of the antenna, and much lower separation on the back of the antenna. We also did a turbulence wake comparison to see uh, the impact of this turbulence wake on our empennage. You can, uh, on the top, you have the, the first, the original design, and on the bottom, the optimized design. You can see on the bottom of the, uh, the antenna, we had a lot of separation on the first case. And the, the turbulence wake was much more severe uh, on the previous design. The, the, the flow is smoother on the optimized geometry. So after you did your preliminary design, you have an ideal position for the AAAU and the other systems. You take your aircraft to the wind tunnel to perform the testing and the configuration freezing. The tunnel used was the DCTA wind tunnel, which belongs to the Brazilian Air Force. It's an atmospheric wind tunnel. And with that wind tunnel, we could get a, a six, component, uh, six components of force and moments. And our model, it was one-tenth scale uh, with all movable contro control surfaces and flaps. And with this model, we, we could get a Reynolds number of one million at the mean aerodynamic cord. It has all the, the systems that are integrated to the aircraft. And also, uh, we tested vari uh, variable triple AU and radon's position to optimize on the wind tunnel. And variable streaks and taillets uh, geometry 
We also had uh, pressure taps on the AAAU to measure the pressure distribution. And during the wind tunnel test, we measured all the basic aerodynamic coefficients, uh, static, uh, and the pressure distribution at the AAAU. And the, the main objectives of the, the wind tunnel were to, the, the objectives of these coefficients are uh, to provide aerodynamic data uh, for performance, stability, and control, and loads analysis. And also the pressure distribution over the AAAU, they, they provide substantiation for the CFD modeling. Well, uh, we, we, we analyzed uh, the effects over the coefficients of the flaps deployment and, and the incidence of original tail, elevator, rudder, and uh, aileron, uh, which means we had a complete matrix, both longitudinal and lateral. And the final goal was to find the best position for the AAAU antenna and radiums following all the design constraints and to set the best combination of streaks and taillets in order to restore our lateral directional coefficients to the design values, which means configuration freezing. Uh, the results of the wind tunnel test, we had three months campaign, uh, more than 600 runs. One of the, the major results was the scene beta matching, as, as I previously discussed. Uh, we had after the, the, the positioning of the antenna and all the systems, we had a degradation of the, the uh, directional stability of the aircraft. So we, we, we incorporate taillets and strakes to restore our stability. We also did a visualization tests on the wind tunnel to, to assess the flow uh, through the, 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 the radomes and the systems. And we did the CFD validation with the visualiz visualization tests uh, to compare it with the CFD analysis. And this is the final configuration. Uh, after you did your wind tunnel test, you know, have all those, those data from the wind tunnel, you can start your design optimization in terms of aerodynamics. Uh, the triple AU was already optimized during the preliminary design, so the radomes and antennas uh, were analyzed. Uh, here in the top of the nose of the aircraft, we have uh, the, the SATCOM radome and the antennas array and the air-to-air -air refueling probe. So the, the inter interaction between these bodies uh, caused some interference drag, so they, their shape were optimized, so we could minimize this interference drag. Uh, about air inlets and sensors, we did CFD simulations to to get the best position for the sensors here. Uh, is, uh, and sorry for the inlets. Here is a scoop on the strake and Naka inlet. And we also analyzed the the influence of the air to air probe, probe on our static part of the anemometric system. Uh, APU exhaust. Uh, we, we checked the influence of the APU uh, gases plume on, their, on the sensors that are close to the APU exhaust. This is a simulation of a crosswind, uh, 20 knots, uh, and we did temperature analysis on the systems that are near, near the, the exhaust plume. Uh, we also did simulations for the air to air refueling. This is the uh, engine tanker. It has uh, two wing refueling uh, pods and one fuselage refueling system. So we, we did CFD simulation to assess uh, the air to air refueling capabilities on the wing pod. You can see that the receiver is, is emerging on the wing tip vortex and the, on the jet blast of the tanker. And we also did for the fuselage station. And we, we analyzed the pressure distribution on the receiver uh, to, in order to calculate uh, the aerodynamic coefficients and perform flying, uh, flying quality simulations. And after you optimize your craft, uh, you're ready to produce it, to, to start a production. And uh, what the dynamics do on the uh, aircraft production? Uh, the aerodynamic design extends from the conceptual design to the delivery. Uh, in the aircraft manufacturing, we have aerodynamic smoothness requirements. What's that? Uh, it's basically deals with uh, deviations from the original uh, design uh, for control surfaces, major components, uh, angular tolerance, gap and overlap of flaps, uh, gap and steps uh, between surfaces, 
uh, waveness, contour lines, uh, fasteners, and aerodynamic sealing. Here are some examples of the smoothness requirements. Uh, on the top is the basic contour line of uh, aerodynamic shapes. We have uh, fasteners uh, head size, uh, waveness, and gap and steps of, uh, of the aircraft structures. Wing incidence, wing, uh, wing light dihedral, uh, gap overlap of flaps, these are some examples of uh, smoothness requirements. So how are, are those requirements uh, created? We have some uh, areas that are more critical in terms of aerodynamics, like wings and flying surfaces and aircraft nose. So we have tight tolerance, tight production tolerance for those areas. And we have areas that are uh, less sensible to aerodynamic uh, deviations, so we can have soft tolerance to, 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 to have a not so expensive manufacturing process. So uh, during the aircraft manufacturers, uh, the aerodynamics team is responsible for keeping control of those kind of requirements. And after the, the prim, prim, pr primary as assembly, the whole aircraft is measured with uh, laser and calibrated tools uh, to see if those requirements are met. And then after the, the craft is ready, we can do the first flight. Here's the prototype number one first flight. And congratulations, here is a cake of the, the air. We made, it's a real, actual, uh, real photo printed on cake. Uh, and then we start the flight test campaign after the first flight. Uh, and the, the objective of the flight test campaign is to show the compliance of the aircraft with all those certification and design requirements. So all an uh, analysis do, uh, made during, during the design, they are tested, and the, uh, the aerodynamic model can be validated. Uh, in the, some, some aerodynamic phenomena, they cannot be completely predicted uh, on wind tune, by wind tune or CFD or theoretical commands. So uh, you, you test, you can sometimes you discover uh, those phenomena just in flight. It's, a, it's an objective uh, of the flight test to identify such phenomena too. Uh, occasionally, this, this phenomena can lead to design issues such as not achieving stability or performance goals. Then it's necessary to fix the aerodynamics of the aircraft during the flight tests. If, if it's, it's your model is not, uh, be, your aircraft is not behaving uh, exactly how, how your model does. So the aerodynamics team must provide solutions to fix the, the pro, uh, problems of aerodynamics during the flight tests. These are some examples of uh, solutions. This, uh, Vartulons on the wing of an aircraft, uh, wing fences, uh, stall strips, and wing uh, t uh, vertex generators. Sorry, and this is fences for stability, lateral stability. Uh, the complete wind tunnel campaign and the previous knowledge of the basic platform granted the results, and no aerodynamic fix was necessary for our design. Thankfully. So uh, after all the design requirements uh, are met and confirmed by flight test data, the aircraft can be safely delivered to our client. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fonseca.